Hi, everyone. This is Callie. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today as I share a unicorn picnic rainbow swish and pop card. I know that's a mouthful, but there are lots of fun components to this card. When you pull on that pull tab, that rainbow disappears. And then when you push it back in, it reappears. So we're going to go through the process of creating this card together. So in my Misty right now, I have images from the unicorn picnic set. And there is a unicorn from the a little sparkle set and I just like the way that unicorn which is the one I'm coloring right now is kind of lifted off of its hind legs so I wanted to make sure that I use that image as well so I'm going to speed up the coloring here in a little bit but basically I'm laying down a dark warm gray color which is the W3 blending that out a tiny bit with the W1 and then I'm going to fade with a W00 marker and then let it bleed into the white on its own. So I'm not fully covering the entire body of the unicorn, but I wanted it to have that nice shading as well. All right, so moving on to the more colorful bits of this, I am coloring their mane in pinks, teals, and kind of a peachy orange color. Next, I'll color that cloud. So I never leave images fully white when we think they're supposed to be white. There's always a shadow or a pop of color of some sort. So it's more interesting if you add some color. I'm just adding some light, very, very light blues here just to give that cloud a bit of a shimmer and glow. And then I'll quickly use the same markers that I used on everything else to color those tiny fairies uh, using that same blue that I used on the clouds on their wings and then using the same colors that I used for the unicorn mane on the fairy dresses and then we will die cut that add some white gel highlights and then move them aside to work on this stitched rainbow we've got some clouds that I die cut in white and there is this backer piece for the rainbow that I also die cut in white and then off camera I went ahead and die cut all of my rainbow bands in different colors be sure to check out the blog post for this video all of the cardstock colors will be listed for you. It's all Lawn Fawn cardstock. So I'm using some liquid glue and I'm just adding one band at a time to that rainbow backer piece. And I'm making sure that it all fits nicely. And by the time I reached the purple band, I realized that there was gonna be some overhang of that white. So I'm just trimming a little bit of it off so none of it shows. I'm not worried about the bottom of the rainbows because that's gonna be hidden by the clouds. And speaking of the clouds, we're going to go ahead and work on our front cloud borders. So I've got some puffy cloud border dies here, and we're going to die cut from two different pieces of cardstock to get two different layered panels. So I have the smaller, shorter panel, and then I've got that larger piece. And I'm doing it at an angle strategically because I know that that rainbow is going to take up a lot of space in that swish and pop mechanism. So I die cut it at an angle so I can hide more of it. All right, so I ink blended with a bit of Mermaid Lagoon to give those puffy cloud borders a bit of color. And now we're gonna work on that background. I'm using Worn Lipstick Distress Oxide ink for the very top. And then I wanted to add an orange as well. So I used some dried marigold Distress Oxide ink to kind of help all of the colors on the unicorn and everything be really cohesive with my background. So I added some orange and then went back in with a worn lipstick just to blend that in really well. Next, we have the swish and pop mechanism. I have that pull tab in white, the little pull tab indicator in white, and then that acetate piece, which is the mechanism that's gonna have that swish and pop in it so that we can move that rainbow back and forth. I wanted to make sure that my pull tab here is super sturdy, so I went ahead and die cut a second piece and glued them together. Next, we'll attach this to the acetate piece using a small brad, and we're gonna do it on the further end of the holes there on that acetate piece. And that second hole that's left is going to be adhered to the back panel to hold it in place for the mechanism. So we have this L arm that's going to die cut some holes into our background panel and that will determine where our swish and pop lies. So I've decided where I want my holes to be and that L lever is going to help you uh, make sure that those are lined up perfectly to the side of your card panel. So that's what I did. And now I'm gonna use a second brad to adhere this to the second hole from the right, and that will hold our mechanism in place onto our background panel. 
So when I flip this over here, you're going to see that that mechanism is going to swish and pop back and forth freely. We want to make sure that it's not too snug. And then now I want to make sure that the cloud is going to kind of cover all of my mechanism pieces. And once I've decided where I want that swish and pop mechanism to stop, I'm going to add a small stopper. I said small, but I actually cut it a little bit too big. So I peeled it off quickly and trimmed it and put back another piece. I'm gonna trim that acetate piece now because our rainbow is not gonna extend beyond our card. We also wanna create a stopper going the other direction. So I went ahead and put my rainbow on there. And then I pulled on my pull tab as far as I could go without seeing it through the bottom of the lower portion of the cloud border panel on top. And then I put a stopper at the end of that band. I realized I didn't need that second cloud. So went ahead and peeled it off. And then I peeled off the other cloud as well because I realized that the angle of the rainbow isn't gonna be perfect. So the cloud isn't gonna sit parallel with the bottom of my card. So I decided to pull it off and die cut another one just to make sure that I can line it up perfectly after the fact. At this point, before I adhered the cloud border to this background panel, I decided I wanted to get a matting all around my card base. So I trimmed both with a quarter inch off all the way around, and now we can go ahead and add our cloud border. So I'm just tracing that rainbow with a pencil to make sure that I don't put any foam tape where it doesn't belong. And I do double stack my foam adhesive just to make sure that there's lots of space for that rainbow to swish back and forth. Now we're gonna die cut that little notch for our pull tab indicator. We can line it up by butting up that metal side. And there are two little carrots that help you line it up between the pull tabs and that will make sure that everything die cuts perfectly. Now I'm gonna trim my pull tab and then we can go ahead and adhere our little pull tab indicator. And I wanted that little carrot window to be pink, so I used a pink Copic marker to color that. And now I can go ahead and adhere that little pull tab indicator piece at the very end there. Okay, so the hardest part of the card is over. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off all of the backings on my foam tape and then adhere my cloud borders. And the funnest part is when I get to create my scene. So I'm pulling in all of my unicorns and fairies that I colored previously. I'm gonna make sure that there's plenty of space for a sentiment at that bottom left-hand corner. I'm using some liquid adhesive to adhere all of my images. And on this first one, I'm strategically putting it right over that little cloud from the rainbow so that we don't see that at all. And I kind of put my sentiment stamps in place just to make sure that there's plenty of room. And then I'm gonna build my scene around the spacing for that sentiment. I'm just tucking this one in behind the clouds and then adding my fairies last. Since they're so tiny, I just wanna make sure that there was plenty of room for my unicorn. Okay, so now we can work on our sentiment. The sentiment lines up so well because the stamps are cut around the words in rectangles. So I just lined them up at the very bottom there with the word magical and then stamped and embossed them in white. The embossing powder tool that I used is made of a clay powder, so it kind of leaves a residue, but you can just buff that off with a cloth. When I have a scripty message like this, I like to fussy cut around the letters because I feel like it gives your sentiment a bit more balance. I'm gonna use my tea ruler and some liquid adhesive and adhere that sentiment, and then we can go ahead and adhere this entire panel to a card base. Also, avoiding adding any adhesive near or around that brad. We just wanna still make sure that everything flows well. And then once I have that lined up, our card is then finished. How fun is that rainbow popping in and out of the background clouds there? So I hope you enjoyed this. I had so much fun creating it. Actually, I had a lot of frustration making it because it's a little bit tricky to line up that rainbow just right, but it ended up working out and I hope you love how it turned out. Thanks so much for being here with me today and have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye. 